Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm honored to present my work here. My name is uh, Zhi Han Hu, and I'm from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Um, today, I'm presenting the drug synergistic combination predictions where large-scale pre-training and graph structure learning, um, which tackles the problem of drug synergistic prediction. This work was done in collaboration with uh, CUHK, uh, Biomap, and COST. I'm delighted to serve as the representative to present this work on behalf of my collaborators. So um, this presentation will include five parts. The problem definition and motivation, uh, related works, uh, our proposed methods, achieve the results and the conclusions. Um, so first of all, I think the, um, the problem and motivation of this work is a drug combination therapy has been widely applied in both uh, traditional and modern medicine due to its diverse merits. So the, it refers to the use of two or more drugs together on specific cells that have a greater or smaller effect than the sum of their individual effects. The right upper figure shows the rough illustration of different drug combination effects. So uh, the curve in the figure uh, refers to the same uh, drug e response effect where the additivity which suggests uh, no interaction is a straight line and synergistic or antagonistic uh, are either concave or convex correspondingly. <clears throat> so drug combinations um, can be synergistic, so which improve efficacy, uh, reduce side effects, and also may overcome drug resistance. So for example, uh, 5 fluoracyl plus uh, low covering on colorectal cancer cells will have some synergistic effect. Uh, on the other hand, drug combinations could also be antagonistic. It will decrease uh, therapeutic effect or also host toxicity, as uh, illustrated in the example. So uh, the motivation to tackle this problem is uh, traditional methods for drug combination disc uh, discovery includes tr clinical trials or animal models. So it is uh, time consuming, which takes uh, from days to years. It is also not safety, which requires a wet blood test. And it is also high costy, which requires materials and equipment. Uh, recently, high throughout drug screening makes a lot of data available but they still leave a huge blank space for drug combination space. So for instance, around billions of combinations in the combination space, but only a hundred thousands of data label available. So therefore, uh, computation methods are urgent to find novel synergistic drug combination candidates in a large space, uh, which is uh, fast, safety, and little cost. Okay, recently some machine learning and neural network uh, deep learning based methods have been proposed to discover a uh, novel drug combination prediction problem. So um, although their models are different in details, uh, but they are similar at a high level, uh, which takes two drug features plus uh, cell line features and predicts the synergistic effect. So deep synergy here combine three different types of chemical features from drug and genomic information uh, together with uh, cancel cell line features. And deep DDS or MRGNN uh, converts molecular drugs into graphs and reads out the graph embedding uh, combined with cell lines. So these methods, um, they are easy to comprehend and also interpretable. They are also uh, fast and require, and require rapid computation time. Also, they achieve considerable accuracy, but they can still be improved with more data modalities included, also more advanced feature representations, and more training techniques. So therefore, um, we employed uh, various skills and techniques to achieve the aforementioned enhancement. 
um, for more modalities, we include more data types, uh, such as disease uh, proteins, into the drug synergistic model uh, to generate more informative features. Um, for more advanced feature representations, uh, for structured data, which uh, refers to like drugs or proteins, we utilize advanced structural representation models to generate embeddings. And for non-structured data, such as disease, you uh, ut utilize knowledge, a graph, or graph representation learning uh, to learn their relationships with other nodes and generate uh, their corresponding embeddings. So for training techniques, uh, we also use the self-training and graph structure learning techniques to uh, further uh, boost our learning process. So together with all these uh, techniques and skills, we have our proposed method. Um, so for additional data mortalities, uh, thanks to these work, uh, we can utilize them to uh, integrate more data mortalities. So Prime KG is a integrated data platform uh, which integrates 20 high quality data sets, bio repositories and ontologies consisting of millions of interactions. And TDC is also another uh, data resource platform uh, which includes curated uh, AI ready data sets, machine learning tasks, and benchmark data sets. So from uh, these two data sets, we extracted our uh, needed uh, drug protein or gene interaction or disease interaction uh, from this data set uh, to include more data modalities. So how, after we extract all these uh, additional data modalities and features, how to in integrate and represent these modalities together? Uh, so here we use a heterogeneous graph which take all these modalities to together and represent it as uh, nodes or edges, which refers to the uh, instances and relations. Conclusively, after we build this um, heterogeneous graph, we have around uh, 10,000 drugs, uh, 20,000 proteins, and 17,000 disease nodes, together with the 2.5 million edges. So uh, the different edge types and node types are shown in the table and figure. So after the heterogeneous graph is built, an intermediate question arises: how to represent the nodes and instances within our heterogeneous graph. Here we then utilize the, the advanced the feature representation techniques to represent this a node within our heterogeneous graph. So as I as for mentioned, uh, for structural data such as drugs or proteins, uh, we can use uh, uh, advanced unsupervised models, which is trained on large unannotated data to generate the corresponding uh, features. So for drugs, we generate a 2,304 dimensional vector. And for proteins, we generate a 1280 dimensional vector. And for disease, we have no structural information about disease. Um, so we utilize a knowledge graph learning model, which is a rotate to learn the uh, correlations or the relations uh, within the disease and other biological terms and generate the corresponding 400 dimensional vector for disease nodes. These generated embeddings then serve as input features to the graph. Uh, and also, for all these generated embeddings, our aforementioned drug similarity edge are constructed by comparing the embedding distance. Okay. Um, next, uh, 
um, after we constructed our uh, heterogeneous graph with um, uh, no embeddings, they still leave many isolated nodes. So to minimize all these isolated nodes and infer as many relations as possible, we introduced uh, procedural edges into our graph. Um, so uh, utilizing the modality data sets, we can pre-train a DDI, which is drug-drug interaction or uh, drug-target interaction modules to pre pre predict the top ranking, high confident uh, procedural edge in our heterogeneous graph. So as shown in the figure, um, there are some uh, lines uh, represent as dots, which they are then those generated procedural edge. So notably, our uh, pre-trained uh, DDI or DTI module can be replaced with other uh, advanced pred predictive methods. Here we just use a simple uh, MLP plus encoder architecture for our pre-trained mo modules. So after this uh, step, uh, that will leave um, little isolated nodes in our heterogeneous graph. So next, together with all these modules, we can then construct our pipeline as follows. So first, um, with the extracted heter uh, data modalities, we construct our heterogeneous graph. Uh, next, we generate node embeddings for our uh, different node types. And third, uh, we generate procedure age for our graph. Fourth, uh, we conduct message parsing on our refined graph uh, with graph convolutional or graph attention networks. Fifth, uh, we extracted the corresponding uh, processed uh, drug or cell line embeddings from our um, heterogeneous graph. And finally, with those uh, extracted embeddings, we can then uh, conduct the a prediction of synergistic effect. So um, note here that our cell line is treated as the first, the weighted sum of our protein embeddings, and second, uh, the original uh, protein gene expression vector. Uh, <clears throat> oh, next. Um, now the overall pi pipeline can be trained end to end, uh, but billions of drug combination uh, space are present in unnot unnotated data, while only a few hundred thousand labels are accessible. So how to utilize this un unnotated data? We introduce a self-training procedure to further boost our uh, pipeline. So. Um, so uh, we first step, we predict the label probabilities for sampled and annotated data. Uh, next, we filter out those high confidence uh, labels and assign the procedural labels to all these annotated data. Uh, finally, we add these uh, procedural labeled annotated data to our training set and repeat the training process several times. So this serves as our, our cell training procedure. Okay, so finally we present our results achieved on uh, three different experiments. So we conduct um, three different, we conduct three different experiments covering different aspects. So firstly, a uh, tenfold cross-validation uh, is conduct, benchmarking is on conduct on a drug harm data set. Secondly, we train on drug harm data set and test directly on a domain shift data set, which is uh, AstraZeneca. Uh, finally, we filter out the drugs in AstraZeneca, which occurs in our training set and ties our data on this unseen test set. So the testing pipeline is shown as the figure below. Okay, we have three um, 
we train our model on Dracom, and we have three different testing modules. So uh, on Dracom, uh, we compare with the different methods, and since uh, this doesn't contain like a domain shift data, so every method perform over uh, many methods perform over 90, and maybe there's no much challenge on this data set. So uh, conclusively, we achieved uh, around 0.19 AROC higher than the second best uh, deep data S. So we also examined the predicted probabilities of the correct labels. And as shown, so most uh, dots uh, lie under the diagonal, uh, which uh, refers to our higher predicted probabilities. So uh, the results are similar for also the domain ship data set with AstraZeneca. And AstraZeneca involves plenty of unseen drugs and cell lines. Thus, the drop of per performance is of no surprise. So, however, we also uh, achieve around 12 AURC improvement uh, over deep DDS. And uh, predicting correct labels probabilities are also similar. So, lastly, um, in fact, the AstraZeneca dataset still consists, contains overlapping drugs or cell lines. So, to further test our generalizability of our model, we then filter out those. Uh, Interacted, uh, uh, interacted data in AstraZeneca and leave an unseen data set for testing. So the corresponding result is shown in the uh, right table. And uh, the uh, results accuracy are slightly dropped than the results of AstraZeneca. So we also done further uh, evaluation to uh, to investigate how the similarity of input drugs and the frequency of input cell line uh, has an impact of the predicted score. So as shown in the below two figure, our model is somehow a robust to the input drug similarity or input cell line frequency. So the slightly drop is uh, is as expected and also reasonable. So um, this concludes our uh, experiment results. And conclusion, we, in this work, we utilize several techniques to tackle the challenge of drug synergistic prediction. In general, our work achieves top performance on, on those standardized data sets. Uh, moreover, we generalize well to uh, domain shift or unseen data sets. So uh, finally, I would like to express my gratitude and to all of my collaborators, uh, particularly Professor uh, Le Song, Professor Xin Gao from Biomap, uh, and also thank mostly to both of my supervisors, Professor Irwin King and Professor Yu Li, and also to the uh, Recom organizations. Uh, thank you.